Hello, everybody. I forgot something. I got the butt. I got the butt. You see that butt? Problems? Uh, I don't know. Uh, not every day I can win, right? So the day before the event, we hosted a t-shirt ride with Eliel and my son, who's eight at the time, got to do it with me. It's one of the most proudest moments I've ever had in my life. He killed it. It was about a two-hour ride with something like 1,500 feet of climbing. The turnout was outstanding. Uh, Eliel actually made a bunch of t-shirts for everyone. So whoever came, I think we had like 30 shirts uh, to give out. It was just amazing. And my son rode out of his soul, man. Like he was so stoked on everyone and he didn't want me touching him. He didn't want me putting my hand on his back. He wanted to ride with everyone and he did. And the whole thing about t-shirt rides and why I love them so much is that everyone who's in a t-shirt, it's okay that you're riding next to an eight-year-old. It's okay that we're not going super fast because you're in a t-shirt. So it's not that big of a deal. You can see the custom shirt that Eliel made for us here. Everyone had, so it has their colors with the Ride Bikes Bro uh, bear on there. And man, I can't tell you how proud I was of this day. Getting to ride with my son, just crushing, dude. He usually complains a lot. He didn't complain once during this ride. Everyone was so stoked on him. Everyone was being so nice. It was just amazing. Afterwards, we went and had like a, a little juice and an acai bowl and a veggie burger. And it was just the greatest, greatest day of my life, 100%. That night, I took my smoking hot wife to the VIP dinner where we got to see Peter Sagan kind of do an interview. It was super cool. A couple of beers, then uh, it's no problem for me. <laughs> I like that. So your bike matches the socks, which matches the bars, which matches your compass. Part of the whole kit did you have and you were like, I gotta just incorporate this across the board. It was all just based on eating donuts. So it's just uh, inspired by all the crazy colors basically for all the donuts. So. so you don't get the plain sugar, you get the swirls and sprinkles? I get everything, yeah. <laughs> Not just one either, variety. You're eating cheese right before the ride? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> did you not watch freaking Game Changers last night? Dude. I did. I love cheese, man. Blood vessels are swelling out right now. And then we were off. And there's a ton of people that showed up for this ride. It was really crazy. Tons of hitters, but also just an amazing turnout. And so all these people would love to ride right next to Peter Sagan. And that was kind of the story of the whole day is how many people wanted to just be next to him. And so I'm trying to get through the group. I'm trying to come through, get to the front, be next to him. And I see uh, Sir Safety here with, you know, but dude, if you have that kind of hair, like look at his hair just flapping in the wind. Like you don't want to conceal that head of hair uh, under a helmet. Speaking of hair, another crazy set of uh, dreadlocks here by this guy. Um, lots of characters throughout the whole group. I mean, there's just lots and lots of dudes um, out here riding. Now, I hate being cold, man. I don't even want to entertain the idea of being cold for one second. And so uh, before the ride, it was a little chilly. It was going to get warm later. I grabbed a vest in which that if I had to, I could throw away. But so I'm looking goofy. Now, clearly, I don't want Peter Sagan to see me in my puffy flannel $10 vest from the dollar store. All good. I'm going to stay behind him. And here he is. We found him. I, I honestly 
had really thought I was not going to get a chance to ride with him. I thought either him and like he was going to have his whole crew, like some Bora Hongers bros all around him and you couldn't even get near him. Okay, so I was stoked that I was right there. Like I'm next to him. Now watch this. He's so amazing. I just want you to watch how he puts his vest in his pocket. Okay, like I, I know this is a small thing. But look how meticulous he is about getting that po- that vest in his pocket and like dialed in. It's it just shows how amazing uh, or how special he is, right? So like when I put a vest in my pocket, it's like flailing about. It's all bunched up. It looks weird. <laughs> I also want you to notice uh, the position of his GoPro. So check out the front GoPro of, of Peter Sagan's GoPro. Is it facing forward? Is it getting any good shots? No, dude. It's all of the Sagan. Are everybody happy? Boran Groe is the best thing. Sit down. Now, this is like an unreal experience that I'm getting to ride this close to Sagan. But to my right is Corey Williams, right? So th- it's just insane, dude. The, this ride was absolutely insane uh, i got to be behind sagan i would say for at least for the first half of the ride more than anyone i was just on his wheel he wasn't shaking me dude like i had the go i ran through so much gopro so then he flicks his arm and then he takes a spit and it, it blows all over me now it's okay because he's the chosen one and i'm being anointed i mean being anointed by the mist of the chosen one But in all honesty, it was actually pretty gross. We've been riding for maybe 45 minutes or so. Um, The field is kind of strung out, still really big, and Sagan starts ripping this descent. Cop car almost kills him. And so then the cop car decides, I didn't get him, I'm gonna try to get every other cyclist. And then stops in the middle of the road, dude. Try Very sketchy moment, but then everyone just lit it up. Dude, I rode this friggin' vest for so long. The thing is that no, we didn't stop. And I was thinking that I, I was thinking we were gonna stop at rest stops and stuff like that. Um, but it just was full gas, dude, the whole time. It was very, a very difficult and challenging ride. I did finally just throw it off to the side of the road because uh, we had just blown by the first rest stop, and we hit this descent. And man, the, Sagan comes flying and he did this a lot he kind of like pre-hops or like bunny hops the bike in this weird way of like settling in the tires i don't know dude but he flew down this descent he'd never been on it before and so now everyone is trying to stay with him because he's the best descender in the world and unfortunately that's going to cause a little bit of issues because of how big the gap started becoming. You know, it, the field was breaking apart here. And I think that's what Sagan wanted to do is try to distance himself from a bunch of people. And like here, I mean, look at the gaps. I mean, it is just breaking apart. And I cannot have this. I have to be in the front group. So I'm going as hard as I can. Everyone's kind of going as hard as they can. Everyone's taking a lot of risks. And so then, unfortunately, there was an accident here. This woman, she loses the rear wheel just a little bit and, man, takes a really bad tumble. It could have been way worse. And she is actually a really good rider. She's not a Fred or anything like that. Um, It was not good. But this is what's weird is there's someone, like, really hurt on the side of the road and everyone's just now, like, smash mode. Uh, But it is time to smash. I have to get back up to the front group, like, now. Talk
talking but it makes no sense I need space to find myself A little time to get some rest If I stay I lose my breath I'm going to find my space Made it so we made it back on right as we hit the climb. I would say this is probably the biggest climb of the day. Uh, it, was the, it was the coolest climb. I was feeling terrific and rode really well here, but it was still so hard. And a lot of guys were getting popped. A lot of guys were dropping off. Um, everyone's like cutting the turns, trying to take the, you know, the shortest way around. I was trying to get back up to Sagan because I didn't want a gap to open up. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be as close to him as I could. And it's just crazy because like he's a sprinter, right? But watching him climb is basically he's like the best climber in the local area, you know? So it's like amateur wise, he is the best climber you'll ever see. Um, but that's how good of a rider he is. Uh, so I got to kind of climb there with him a little bit. Um, and then also Eric Zabel was on the ride. You know what I mean? Like, dude, just the heaviest of the hitters. You could see the group here is just shattering. How's this feel? Ha! Hell, dude. Not uh, super easy. We hit that climb, dude. Full gas. Hit the descent, full gas. Hit the flats, full gas. We haven't stopped yet. So I'm definitely out of water, dude. I'm hoping that we're gonna stop at the next rest stop. I think we're like 50 miles in. Dude, it's just like, maybe I'm sucking and these guys are going easy, but there's really no one else. Like the front group's pretty small, dude. After that climb, we were dwindled down to maybe 20 solid, right? And there is, a lot of Legion dudes in here, Corey Williams and his crew. I mean, there's just hitters on hitters on hitters. You can see Corey there right next to Sagan. It would have been cool to see them heads up sprint because yeah, Sagan is an amazing sprinter, but I think that Corey might be a better sprinter than him just like one-on-one, -on -one, like not doing some hundred mile ride. But here's what's happened is that there was a wreck like right next to us and that's what I was thinking is like, how worried is Sagan about Rex? This was my chance to actually talk to Sagan. And so I asked him, you know, how worried are you about these type of wrecks or something like that happening next to you? So how afraid are you that that's gonna happen right next to you, dude? Don't think about it. You couldn't really hear it in the video, but he just said, I don't want to think about it. Or you just don't think about it. That's what he said. And so, you know, the whole ride, I'm thinking like, how can I engage with Sagan? How can I talk to him? How can I say something to him that's not just like a fanboy? You know, I'd, I really wanted to get him on the video saying like, yeah. And then I was just gonna put that at the end of every one of my videos from here on out. And man, Sagan was so cool. Um, I really, again, thought that it was going to be something where he was going to have a whole team around him and no one could touch him or get near him. Because, dude, he's worth so much money. And, I mean, no one knows who I am. Like, I could just shoulder check him into the freaking woods, you know? Uh, it's it was it seems like a very high risk for him to be out here with these guys with with everyone and so for him to do that and to be close to people um, and not be like untouchable I think is super duper cool um, I, I got a lot of respect for him because of that because of him being out here riding next to people giving everyone a little bit of their time and I, like I said, was just on his wheel as much as I could be, just fanboying out. You can see Corey filming as well. And here for a brief moment, me and Sagan locked eyes. We made eye contact and I was able to travel into his mind and hear his inner thoughts. I think uh, it's normal for people if they go on the toilet or not. Dude, it's... So crazy how uh, many people are just on. 
I want to get him to say yuck, but it's like I'm so embarrassed to ask him. Everyone's just Mind sucking you. the D, dude. <laughs> Go. Look at this lake. Bro, first so it's a, we're almost come. 60 come miles in. Five, we're almost four, 60 miles in and it's the first stop. This has been, this has been intense, bro. All right, dude, so I roll up the road. They're all back there at the rest stop. I feel embarrassed talking to the camera in front of everyone. So I'm just gonna spin. It's been um, quite the measuring of the D's, dude. Everyone wants to be right by him. There's been some wrecks. It's like, there's just this aura that comes off him and you just wanna like be next to him. It's weird. Anyway, hard. <laughs> now Sagan got stuck at that rest stop taking pictures and that was one of the big reasons that him and his crew didn't want to stop they were going to just ride through the whole thing is because as soon as he stops he's going to have to take pictures with people non-stop and that's what ended up happening but he did he is a good guy good guy Sagan and he did that uh Corey Williams bro you think he's a sprinter he's actually a climber with sprinting legs because the guy was killing it uh we did some cool descents and pretty much from here on this group just hammered man it's full of hitters Legion was crushing it we smashed. basically from the beginning downhill but fast technical and then first 49 miles were fucking hard hard full gas and then we chilled it was nice we got to ride behind peter sagan and that was really fun good ride what did you think of his skills on the descents i wasn't behind him man oh my god i was in i was in the front i wasn't trying to be too far back on those descents man people were sketchy today I don't know if I already said, but this fucking guy is straight hitter. You got some KOMs? I got three KOMs. I got a 20 minute climb KOM in the middle. I got two more five minute climb KOMs towards like that police section on the way back. Just power from the booty, baby. It's glued open. Yeah. There was a crash. It was right by him. And I said, how nervous does that make you when shit like that happens? And he said, I just don't want to think about it. So initially I got, I was uh, 139 years old is what they had me listed as, which is, uh, it's all good, dude. Looking um, good. Looking good looking for 139. Yeah. They've updated that since. And uh, so I got ninth overall. Uh, but I mean, well, you, what'd you get? Six? Seventh. Seventh. Yeah. I mean, but the thing is like, yeah, we were going hard, but no one was really racing to the finish. Nah, it's not a race. There was a couple. There was a couple guys that they were skipping all the stops, and they did really well. But <clears throat> don't matter, dude. Anyway, uh, zero percent vegan options over there. It's all, <laughs> it's all good, dude. Life still rips. We did 95 miles and 7,000 feet of climbing in four hours and 20 minutes. It was absolutely insane. I was toast. I was done. I got back to the house. I, I just laid in bed. And what an amazing event. Absolutely fantastic. If you're in the area, I'd highly suggest coming and checking it out. And as always, vegan cyclists. Yeah.